technology and livelihood education, agriculture, and fishery arts for grade 8. Our topic is Phases of Fish Culture Diving into TLE, it's your turn. Technology, livelihood, education so bright. Come on, let's make it fun. Everything feels right. TLE, we're on a roll. Lifelong learning is our goal. ICT and electricity, we're crafting futures, can't you see? The following are the objectives of this lesson. The following are the content area vocabulary. Estuarine. This refers to something related to or characteristic of an estuary, which is the tidal mouth of a large river where the tide meets the stream. Spawning refers to the process by which fish, shellfish, and certain other aquatic organisms release eggs and sperm into the water, typically for the purpose of reproduction. Salinity, concentration of dissolved salts, primarily sodium chloride, table salt, in water. It is often expressed in parts per thousand or PPT or as a percentage. Brackish water, water that forms when freshwater from rivers or lakes mixes with salt water from the sea. Have you ever wondered how the fish we eat are raised, or how aquatic animals are protected in their natural homes? Fish culture is more than just catching and eating fish, it is a process that involves taking care of fish, helping them multiply, and ensuring that their habitats remain healthy for future generations. By learning about these processes, we can better understand the connection between people, food, and the environment. In this lesson, you will explore the phases of fish culture, compare their characteristics and processes, and classify fish based on their habitats. More importantly, you will be challenged to appreciate the importance of protecting aquatic biodiversity, not just for economic purposes, but also for the balance of our ecosystems and the well-being of communities that depend on water resources. The phases of fish culture. Fish culture is the practice of raising and managing fish in controlled or semi-controlled environments, such as ponds, tanks, or other bodies of water, with the purpose of increasing their growth, reproduction, and supply to meet human needs for food, livelihood, and other uses. The first phase of fish culture is the Fish cultivation is the rearing of fish under controlled or semi-controlled conditions with the goal of producing either high quantities of uniform-sized fish or maximizing total weight. Intensive fish cultivation Intensive fish cultivation is conducted in limited areas with high capital investment but yielding very high production, example. Raising tilapia in tanks with aerators and commercial feeds. The extensive fish cultivation. 
Extensive fish cultivation is carried out in wide areas with minimal capital, resulting in low production. Example, milkfish or bangus rearing in large brackish water ponds that rely mainly on natural food. The semi-intensive fish cultivation makes use of some or most modern production techniques, balancing investment and output. Example, cultivating shrimp or carp in ponds, where natural food is supplemented with commercial feeds and water is managed with moderate technology. The second phase of fish culture is the fish propagation. It is the process of increasing fish populations either naturally or with human assistance. It ensures the continuous supply of fish by allowing them to reproduce and multiply. The types of fish propagation. The first type is the natural propagation. Reproduction occurs naturally in the habitat, usually through spawning, where eggs are fertilized internally or externally. The semi-natural propagation combines natural and artificial methods, where fish breed in a controlled environment designed to resemble their natural habitat with some level of human intervention. The artificial propagation, it involves direct human control over reproduction, such as collecting eggs and milt, sperm, and fertilizing them externally. The third phase of fish culture is the fish conservation. It is the sustainable management, protection, and wise use of fish and aquatic resources to maintain their populations, biodiversity, and habitats for present and future generations. It involves following fishery laws, rules, and regulations to ensure long-term availability and ecological balance. The importance of fish conservation. Conserving fish biodiversity is vital for maintaining healthy aquatic ecosystems, supporting sustainable economic development, and preserving cultural traditions. It safeguards ecological integrity while ensuring that fish resources remain available for future generations. The following are the local endangered species, the whitefin tope shark. From the family of Triacidae. Its habitat is in the coastal waters of the Philippines. It can grow up to 96 centimeters in length. Notes, juveniles have dark markings on their caudal fins. The Hampala Lompizi. From the family of Saprinidae. Its habitat is endemic to the Philippines. Notes, a rare rayfinned fish, specifically type of carp, vulnerable due to its limited distribution. The Sanarapan. From the family of Gobianellini, habitat, Lake Buhi, Cameron Sur, Philippines. Notes, also called tabios, it is the smallest commercially harvested fish in the world. Sardinella tawilis. From the family of Clupeidae, habitat, Tall Lake, Batangas, notes, the only freshwater sardine in the world, locally called tawilis. The Barbodes amarus or Paiit. From the family of Saprinidae, habitat, formerly endemic to Lake Lano, Mindanao size, reached up to 10.8 cm in length, notes, now considered extinct, locally known as Paiit. The Fish Sanctuary, under the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998, Republic Act 8550, as amended by RA 10654, a fish sanctuary is defined as a designated area where fishing or other forms of activities which may damage the ecosystem of the area is prohibited and human access may be regulated. These sanctuaries serve as safe havens for breeding, spawning, and growth of fish populations, ensuring sustainable fisheries and food security for local communities. The following are the famous fish sanctuaries in the Philippines. The Apo Island Fish Sanctuary in Negros Oriental, one of the country's most successful marine sanctuaries, established in 1982, it helped restore coral reefs and fish populations through strict protection. The Tuba Taha Reefs Natural Park in Sulu Sea, Palawan, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, declared a no-take zone where fishing is banned, known for its rich coral reef system and diverse marine life. The Sumalan Island Fish Sanctuary in Cebu, the first marine protected area, MPA, in the Philippines, established in 1974, famous for successful fish stock recovery after being protected. The Jilyatongan Marine Sanctuary, Cordova, Cebu, 
a popular ecotourism site and well-managed fish sanctuary, known for snorkeling and diving with abundant marine species. The Sarangani Bay Protected Seascape, Mindanao, declared as a protected area and sanctuary, home to diverse fish species, corals, and marine mammals. The Honda Bay Fish Sanctuaries, Palawan, several small sanctuaries were established to conserve reef fish and coral habitats. The Open and Closed Fishing Season Definition of Closed Season Form The Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998, amended 2015, it is the period when fishing is prohibited. Applies to specified fishery species. Restricted by specified fishing gear. Enforced in specified areas of Philippine waters. Closed season schedules, DABFAR, Northeast Palawan, closed from November to January, Visayan Sea, closed from November 15 to February 15, Sambuanga Peninsula, closed from December 1 to March 1, every year. Purpose of closed fishing season. BFAR, Fish Files 2021, allows important fish species to reproduce or spawn, gives fry and juvenile fishes time to mature, helps fish stocks to recover. Benefits of closed fishing season to fishermen and communities, sustainable fishing, ensures long-term supply of fish for future harvests, economic stability, more abundant fish stocks mean higher catch and better income after the closed season. 3. Food security. Communities continue to have access to important fish species. 4. Biodiversity protection. Maintains the balance of marine ecosystems. And 5. Livelihood support. Government and BFAR often provide alternative livelihood programs during closed seasons. The following are the classification of fish according to its habitat. Fish live in different aquatic environments, and their ability to adapt to these habitats is essential for the balance of ecosystems and human food security. Understanding their classification not only deepens our knowledge of aquatic life but also highlights the importance of protecting biodiversity to ensure sustainable fisheries for future generations. The marine or open sea fishes, these species live in oceans and seas, where the water has high salinity. They play a vital role in marine ecosystems and global food supply. Protecting them helps maintain healthy coral reefs and ocean balance. The following are the examples of marine or open sea fishes.
This is Dr. Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.